They're old buildings with earthworks that date back to more than 170 years ago. An explosion destroyed them along with almost a whole city, but today it still stands. Our Marlene Rodriguez takes us back to Fort Brown. Originally called Fort Texas, built by General Zachary Taylor in the United States to establish the Rio Grande as the southern boundary of Texas, with walls more than nine feet high surrounded by a ditch 15 feet deep and 20 feet wide. This particular military installation was strategically of extreme importance at the southernmost tip of Texas on an international border. After the death of Major Jacob Brown during the Mexican-American War, it was renamed after the fallen hero. When the war ended, the fort fell into the hands of Juan Cortina at the time when he raided and tried to occupy the city of Brownsville. Shortly after, Robert E. Lee was stationed at the fort. Eventually, with the approach of Union forces, Confederates set fire to the structure in 1863. During the reconstruction period, the fort was reborn to what we see today. So it served several times in prominence when it comes down to American history, not only just uh, uh, South Texas history. And because of its beautiful arches, Fort Brown was considered one of the most beautiful forts in the whole country. This is the type of period architecture that you find up in the complex forts up in the northeast uh, or in the, the, uh, the northern part of the south, uh, Arlington, Virginia, and that type of thing. It has a replete history. The fort survived a yellow fever epidemic in the 1880s, the Brownsville Raid of 1906, and served as the headquarters for the 12th Cavalry of World War I to 1941. Seven years later, it was deeded to the city with the old fort hospital granted to Texas. Texas Southmost College, where it is still in use by the institution today. In Brownsville, Marlene Rodriguez, Local 23 News.